All right, so let's put some notation on this. Maybe just do a subheading for me, okay? Notation. We are saying that these two problems are two perspectives on the same problem, okay? If you can work out this total change here, you can work out this area, right? Without having to draw the area. Which means, vice versa, if I can work out the area, then I can work out the total change. You're solving the same problem from just two different angles, right? We're used to doing this with auxiliary angle, right? We said, don't write this down. Uh, we said that, you know, this thing here, if you can state it as, whoops, don't need that, as this thing here, right? The right hand side is a lot easier to work with. Yeah, it's much easier to solve. And if you solve this, then you solve that. Right. Well, what we're saying here is if you can solve an area problem, you can solve this or vice versa. Okay. So, let's write down some, write down some notation here. F of 3, take away F of 1. That's the problem we solved over here. Right. Total distance traveled is end point, take away start point. Okay. But what it's equal to is adding up these areas. They happen to be rectangles in this case, okay? Now because I'm summing th things up from one point to another, I don't really have notation for that. Um, I kind of have this notation, right? What's this called again? It's called sigma notation. We use the Greek letter sigma because it's the closest to the English letter S because that's what you're doing. You're adding things up, right? The principle's kind of similar because you're starting somewhere and you're ending somewhere, right? The problem here is, um, I've got nice whole numbers here, from 1 to 2, then 2 to 3. But we already said it doesn't have to be like that. You could have half an hour here, you could have 35 seconds there. So whereas this thing is all to do with, well, where did we introduce this? What topic? In binomial theorem, and also more recently in this term, series and sequences, right? Both of which are dealing with whole objects, right? It's like uh, this plus this plus this, etc. right? So they're all separate. But here, I could have like weird small pieces and long pieces and all different shapes, okay? So therefore, I need a new symbol. The Greek letter for S is taken. So I'm just going to take the English letter for S, the English letter for S, and I'm just going to stretch it out, okay? So this symbol here is just like this symbol here. You're summing a whole bunch of things. You still start from somewhere and you still end somewhere. Now I just need to work out, well, what are the things that we're adding, okay? Hmm. Rectangles, right? Rectangles. Every rectangle, like the area of a rectangle, is always something times something else. It's always a product of two things. What are the two things that I multiply? Length and breadth, right? Length and breadth is usually the way that we say it. That's like the formula you learned here, okay? Because I'm oriented on a... Um, Cartesian plane, instead of going length and breadth, I'm going to say height and width. They're the same ideas, right? Height and width. Tell me what the height and width are. See this height here? It's on the vertical axis. But what is the vertical axis? It's not just some random thing, it has a name, right? The vertical axis on this graph is this guy, right? That's the height of my rectangle. Can I say that again? That's such an important idea, I need to say it again. On this graph, the height of every, every rectangle is f dash x, right? Because that's what this graph is about. It doesn't make sense to say the height here, because this is not an area problem. This is an area problem, okay? What is the width of my rectangle? Hmm. Now, remember I said to you, um, we, I've, I've given you a simple problem with like nice neat chunks, okay? But if it was like two minutes, 35 seconds, all that kind of thing, you could still do it, couldn't you, right? You just would have slightly different messier numbers and fractions and decimals, all that kind of thing. But the one thing that binds all of these is that it's about an x value and it's changed. Do you see that? Like suppose I said to you from one hour and 58 minutes to two hours, the total width would be two minutes, right? It's a change in x. Well, I have language for a change in x. We use the letter D, right? We use that, we introduce that with first principles, right? So a little change in x, a little change in y, that's dy on dx, we're used to that. So that's what I've got here. Do you see that? Height and width. 
So what is it? What are these things that I am adding up over here? I start at one, I end at three, and then I just add up a bunch of rectangles. And every rectangle is the same, right? It's a height times a width, except the heights just happen to change, right? It's a height times a width. That's all that means. Do you see that? S for sum, add up a bunch of things. The things that you're adding up are all rectangles, and this is the dimensions of the rectangles, height and width. Okay. Hmm. Now, just for a second, rewind all the way back to the start. We were talking about uh, uh, an astronaut and a velocity and displacement. Okay. Suppose you did not know that that's what they were. Right? I just told you there's an F dash and an F. Okay. Earlier on, at the end of um, earlier on this term, at the end of geometrical applications of calculus, we learned that if you start at a function and you differentiate, you get f dash, right? But that actually doesn't make sense in this context because look at what's known and what's unknown. You're not starting from this thing and then differentiating to get that. You don't know what this thing is. F is unknown, okay? But what's known is this guy, right? So it actually makes sense not to call this f, but to call this f, this is the function we really know about. I know the equation of every single one of these lines, right? Uh, th these I don't know the equations, right? So therefore, I'm not going to call this f dash. I'm going to call this guy f instead, okay? But that means, well, this can't be f at the same time, right? It's not going from here to a derivative. What do we call it when we go in reverse? We call this a primitive. And I introduced some language to you, uh, some notation for this. I put a capital letter there. A capital F to indicate, look, here's the primitive, here's where you must have come from if this is your derivative. Okay? So therefore, if I come over here, right, what I can say is, well, I'm gonna replace all the little f's with big f's. Like that. Okay? Bless you. And therefore, over here, this f dash, it's not f dash anymore, you see I renamed it. It's the actual function I know something about. So I'm adding up a bunch of rectangles from here to here, and each height is that, and each width is that, okay? All right, I started from hour one and hour three, but that was completely random, wasn't it? Like, I could pick any numbers I like. I could have started at zero. I could have started at hour 50 or something like that. So these values here are sort of just coincidental, right? All they mean is, here's your end, after three hours, I just chose that, it could have been 300, right? And here's your start, yeah? And that's what they meant over here. Here's your end, and here's your start, just like in sigma notation, you see that? Like, there's the start, there's the end, okay? So I can write this for any, not just one and three, for anything, right? Um, if I started at, say, A, and then I went to B, start at A, end at B, right? Then the total distance would be, well, where are you at the end, where are you at the start, right? Well, if I change this end and this start, I better change them over here as well. From here to here, okay? So just, just pause for a minute. <laughs> what on earth is happening? We've taken this problem, which is about like things changing over time and a derivative, right? And realize that if you're thinking about something it's derivative, you might as well be thinking in reverse about something and it's primitive. Does that make sense? Okay. One last piece of notation, because you're like, eh, I don't want to write this because this is a pain. I know it's the same thing, I just put two different values into it. Okay. I'm going to switch places as well. Put this on the left-hand side. Just remember, what is this thing doing? This is the picture you should have in your head when you see that. Right? I'm adding up a bunch of things from somewhere to somewhere, and each thing is a rectangle, right? It's a little rectangle. I, I had two in this case. I might have five or one or 50, but I'm just adding up a bunch of rectangles. I started from here, and I solved it through area. But what if you knew area, and we're trying to solve this? Well, you just take that primitive, take the primitive, and start here and subtract it from ending there. This is just a shorthand way of writing this. Okay? So for instance, you don't need to write this, I just want you to see it. If I told you this, 
x squared from 1 to 3. It looks like this. So it would be, here's your ending point, 3 squared. Here's your ending point, 1 squared, which is just 9 take away 1, which is 8. Okay. I just introduced that because I don't want to keep on writing so many redundant things, capital F's all over the place. I only need one and do the same thing to both. Okay. So, how's your brain doing? This is a big new topic, right? Um, see this thing we're doing here, putting these rectangles together and then getting an area? Uh, the fancy word for taking a whole bunch of things and putting them together is integration. Integration means you take a whole bunch of little things and you combine them into one thing. They're integral, they're whole. That's actually where also we get the word integer, right? Whole, whole object. So I'm taking a whole bunch of little separate pieces and I'm putting them together to create a total area. That's what integration means, okay? But as you've seen, integration is connected to this calculus idea, right? We know that differentiating gives you gradient, but this idea of integrating here, right, gives you an area. Gradient, area. They're opposites for some mysterious reason, okay? Well, this is the reason. This is the illustration, okay? So, let's tidy this all up. I want you to write a little conclusion down the bottom here. Conclusion. This process here, the reverse of differentiation, this is going to be short because I don't have much space. <laughs> the reverse of differentiation is integration. So the opposite of finding a gradient, that's what differentiation does, is finding an area which is not at all intuitive. If someone asks you what's the opposite of hot, you'd say cold. What's the opposite of up, you'd say down. If someone said what's the opposite of gradient, <laughs> error is not the first thing that would come to mind, okay? But this allows us to do so much because in so many places in the world, we know how something is changing. We know how fast we're traveling. We know how fast the water is going into the fossil. But what we don't know is what's the total change. And that's what integration lets us calculate. It's really about area.